Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. We uh, just launched on a brand new lake. Pretty interesting little body of water. Uh, it's several hundred acres, so it's not tiny, but we've got a lot of lakes in my area that are like these little pothole, glacier, clear water bodies of water. Uh, you can see it right here. It, it's pretty cool because it actually, the water is really high. So it goes, it's a long skinny lake. It runs a couple of I think like a mile and a half that way. But there's a lot of dead trees and that's because the water is high. Uh, even at the boat ramp, the dock was pretty much underwater. So I don't know, I know in our area we've had like our water table has risen. So a lot of lakes have actually uh, just come up several feet to the point where some lakes have houses that are flooding just because naturally the lake has come up based on water table. Some of the lakes actually have pumps running nonstop to try to drain the lakes or keep them at a certain level. But anyway, so we're out here, really clear body of water, lots of shoreline cover, which I didn't really know what to expect because when I looked at the uh, aerial photos of it, it was a fall picture. So you really didn't see if there were pads in it. It just looked like a clear body of water. And in this case, uh, lots of shoreline cover, lots of grass, pads, trees, you know, I, what I really thought I'd be doing is fishing deep weed lines, but we might mix it up a little bit. So we're going to look around here. You know, when I just look at the lake, show you the map a little bit, it's pretty cool because, you know, it's a deep, deep body of water, as you can see, real deep gut, you know, not super deep, but 25, 30 feet for kind of a typical natural lake. But then we've got a couple humps, a point, you know, pump. There's just some nice looking stuff here. So we're gonna actually fool around probably more offshore than anything and uh, see if we can't get into a few bass. Uh, I've got not long to fish. I've got a few hours. I'm actually got a guy coming to look at my boat uh, in terms of purchasing it. So I need to be home to make sure that uh, I can answer all of his questions. So let's get out and see what we can find. Feels good. Oh yeah. That's a nice one. Put a waypoint. Oh in the top of the mouth. Probably a two and a half, two and three quarter. That did not take long. Guys, this sets up, like this lake sets up exactly how I kind of learned to fish. Um, you know, weed lines are just one of those things that, I don't know, if you grow up in the North Country and you're a serious bass angler, it's just something you fish. I mean, all our lakes are natural lakes for the most part and there's tons and tons of grass. Um, I wish I had more like this to fish at the professional level. We just don't have that many lakes. At least we don't fish them at the, there's another one. Oh, that's probably a bluegill. Uh, we don't, we don't fish them at a time of year where the grass is really set up. You know, most of my season is generally over. If we go to a North Lake, yeah, we might have it, but I mean, we're sitting out here, middle of summer, 81 degree temperature. This is the way you win tournaments in the north country there's a couple of reasons for that one is generally the better fish pull out and they get on that outside weed line it's a little cooler water uh, a little deeper safer water you got the grass provides great cover and then you got all your bait fish you know whether you got bluegill or perch or panfish they're generally out on the grass line if you've got some shad or minnows or pelagic fish they're going to be you know, roam in deep over water and occasionally come closer to the grass line. It's just, that's where the fish are gonna be. Uh, it, you know, and when you find one, a lot of times you, you can group up, they'll group up and you can catch a bunch kinda on the same exact cast. So anytime you catch one like we just did, you wanna make sure you pepper the area pretty good. And in this case, you know, one of, for me, the first bait I really learned to fish on these grass lines was a worm. 
So I've always done it. It's a real common thing to do up here in the North Country. You know, your Berkeley power worm is definitely kind of the old school bait that everyone used. Uh, a lot of times, actually, even the little four inch worm was a huge player. Uh, but this was kind of, this type of fishing is what changed it for me. You know, I, I, uh, it was always a, you know, a shallow water fisherman. You always, you'd be fishing the docks, right? And you catch fish doing that. But I had, we had a little lake house in Northern Indiana and I had an angler who was a local tournament angler kind of tell me about, you know, you got to get on the outside grass line. You got to fish it grab yourself a worm he actually recommended a Yamamoto hula grub at the time as well you know and you know even a jig and pig and it was one of those things where I kind of took his advice and just went and did it the lake we were on was super deep had a great milfoil line you know down in that 14 foot range to the point where the milfoil came to the surface and you could visually make the cast so I didn't have to be good at electronics at the time but what it did is it took a lake that, you know, I would catch occasional fish on to becoming a lake where I was like, holy cow, there are a lot of fish in this lake. And it just opened up my eyes to it. So it really became the primary way I fished for years. You know, it was, you can go shallow and do all that. But, you know, I, I just knew at the time taking that angler's advice and kind of seeing for myself. And I'm talking, this is back when I was probably 16 years old. You know, my dad and I would get on a grass line and just go, and all of a sudden you'd go for a while, wouldn't catch any, and then all of a sudden you'd catch like five on five casts. And and a lot of times they were better quality. And and not just necessarily in length, but poundage. The fish seemed to be heavier out deeper than a lot of your fish that would be, say, up roaming the bank in a lot warmer uh, temperatures. But it just opened up my eyes, so I love doing this. And I don't necessarily get to do it nearly as much. So I'm pretty happy to see that this lake sets up in this manner because, you know, I live on a river and the grass grows to about two feet deep. So you're not going to, you just don't have the same setup. And I just don't get to fish this way nearly as much. So when we got out here and just idling around, seeing those deep outside grass lines, it really gave me a smile to my face. And to catch one right off the bat, that's pretty good quality. Makes me feel good. So let's catch another one. This is a good one, guys. This is a this is a nice fish. Unless he's got me in grass. He does not. Whew. Now he's got me in grass. Is it a pike? Oh, it's a big bass. What is it? Oh my gosh, I got him. I got him in the belly. That's a big bass. Look at this one. Why doesn't this ever happen in a tournament? Laser sharp Ozark hooks. That is a big bass, guys. Oh, look at that one. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I'll take it. That's a big bass. That, that thing is pushing close to five pounds. It's four and a half for sure. <laughs> well, he thumped it. That was weird. He must have probably grabbed ahead the tail. That's what happens a lot of times when you snag them. They're swimming off with, with the tail and then the hook gets them when you set the hook. But I mean, if you guys watch that, go back and watch it slow-mo. I was just letting it fall and there was a thump, right? Is it, you know, basically I think it was sitting on the bottom, but I mean, that's the key with a lot of grass fishing. Line watching is so important. 
I'm gonna put a waypoint down. Uh, and those are the caliber of fish you catch, but line watching is so important because a lot of your bites come on the fall like that. And not only are you looking though for bites, you're also really trying to determine where you are with respect to the, the weed line. Most weed lines end, most better weed lines end with a pretty sharp taper, right? So you've got a break line. So if you're watching your line, you know, did you fall on top of the grass? Did you fall outside of the grass? You know where your bait is with respect, uh, with respect to the strike zone. So line watching is critical in my opinion. Um, and in that case, you know, I felt the bite, set the hook, got him in the belly. <laughs> I will, I will take that with a five pounder any day, especially in a tournament, assuming you're in a state where that would be legal. Some states, uh, if you don't catch them in the mouth, you can't weigh them in. But that was awesome. Apparently there's big ones in here. This place has a reputation as not being good. I'm just in my area. That's why I've never fished it. In all the years I've never come here because I've been told it's not that good. So let's talk area a little bit just to show you a prime location. So this is where I just caught that fish. That's the waypoint I put down. And you can see if I zoom in, I mean, it's really just a connecting saddle. Uh, you've got a weed line around this point, a weed line coming down this shoreline. And that's a key area. It's a connecting point between two deep holes. Really just, you know, your little sweet spots like that. You're just looking for uh, any sort of irregularities on the weed line. But I want you to keep in mind that that's not necessarily just a point or an indent. Uh, it could be a difference between grasses. So in a lot of cases you might have milfoil out to eight feet and then sand grass out from that. So it could actually be the weed line between the two different types of weeds. You might be looking for bottom composition change. So maybe you got some rock that comes up against that grass line. Uh, you know, you're just looking for some sort of irregularities. The other key is to look for areas that have potential for any sort of wind driven current or, or natural current if you've got some actual water flow coming through that body of water. Uh, so like a pinch point like I just showed you would be a key place to have a little bit of current flow. Uh, this is a natural lake so there's no real current but if there's any wind at all, which today there really isn't, but when you would have some wind you definitely could have some current flow being pushed through this little section. So you just want to key in on those little things. Otherwise, you could just go down the bank of this entire lake. The problem is there's a, there's going to be a lot of dead water. Just because you're fishing a weed line doesn't make it good. You know, you want to really key in on those high percentage areas. That's not a bad one. bad one. Ozark in the top of the face. Nice. Nice. Well, that worm's getting retired. Well, let's talk a little bit about the what I'm throwing. So this is the Magnum Hitworm, Berkeley Maxent Magnum Hitworm, which in my opinion is probably the most well-kept secret amongst professionals. It's amazing how many guys are using this uh, for everything. Like, you know, I'm throwing it on the Ozark rig here, but the reality is you can fish it on a drop shot. You can fish it as a Nako. You can fish it as a uh, shaky head. You can fish it. I mean, this Ozark rig, it works great. Carolina rig, it's fantastic. So on the Ozark rig, the thing that's so great about this, and this is, so this is the core tackle, 5 aught 3 8 ounce Ozark rig. This is the red color, which there might be a few on the website. Uh, we made them special for the Bassmaster Classic. I'm, I'm not even gonna say they're for sure there. If you want the red, you gotta check our website. It's the only place you get it. But the, the key with this, so a lot of people would be like, well, why aren't you throwing a Texas rig? Well, the reason I like the Ozark rig so much is because in the water, it stays horizontal. And if you're fishing grass, if it's horizontal, it rests on top and comes over the grass better than punching down inside of the grass. So if I was punching or trying to get way down deep in the grass, I would definitely be considering a Texas rig. But in this case, 
If my bait stays horizontal, it rides over the top better. The other thing that I like, and I know some people would say, well, I don't want to use this for grass fishing because there's this little little corner right here. Well, that that will catch a piece of grass every once in a while. The thing that I like about that though is when I throw that out, so if I throw that out, I'm fishing it, I'm just letting it go down to the weed line and it's gonna, it's gonna sit on top of the grass. So when it sits on top of the grass, if I do get a little piece of grass in that little corner I was talking about, I actually like that because then I can snap it out and it creates that explosion where that thing wants to, to get away from whatever bass is there. You'd be amazed how many bites you get that way. It's basically the same thing as a jig. One of the best baits for deep weed line fishing is a jig, but a jig doesn't come through grass grape, but it snaps out of the grass grape. That's the thing. The other key thing that I want to point out with the Ozark rig is the fall on this. So when this falls, it actually shimmies on the fall. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, but if I just let it free fall, it shimmies almost like a spoon. Like it's vibrating real, real good. So it acts, it's a whole different fall. It's not like a Texas rig, which is just vertical. The bait is actually shimmying on the fall. And you need that, like the heavier five odd three eighth ounce is what gives you the weight to do that. So it works great with the Magnum Hit Worm. It works great with basically all your different worms, a cut tail worm, things like that. But it just gives the bait such a different look in the water. And that's the key. You know, not only does it ride on top, it snaps clean. It also has its own movement, own gliding motion that the fish haven't seen before. And it's a, it's a motion that triggers the fish into biting. And then on top of that, I'm just throwing in a 15 pound, 100% Berkeley fluorocarbon. This is a medium heavy action rod, custom built. It's an MHX NMB 873. So it's a 7.3, three power. Uh, and then I've just got a Xenon X. Now this is a faster one. It's an 8 point, uh, what is it? 8.3 to one. So from that standpoint, that lets me pick up slack line and set the hook when my bait could be a long distance from the boat. Oh yeah, coming up, oh man, that's another big one, another big one. Oh God, he just broke me off. Guys, he just broke me off, <laughs> oh God, my mistake. Ah, guys, that was totally my fault. That was another four to five pound class fish. Hopefully the jump, you saw it on the jump. I just, I did not uh, have my drag set right. I thought I had my drag set loose to slip and it didn't. And he broke me off. It's as simple as that. But that was another really nice fish. That's another big one. Don't go to that buoy. Same spot. That's what I'm talking about. You get... That feels good, too. I mean, that's another good one. That's another nice one. another three and a half same spot Ozark rig top of the mouth man I'm mad I lost that last one well I think I'm gonna end with that fish guys we've caught a pile we've only been out for maybe an hour and a half and part of that was exploring the lake um, just love this style of fish and I'm gonna do this for a little bit longer hopefully I gave you some tips one other key that I want, if you've made it this far, I'm gonna give you a really important tip. You wanna to listen to this. 
So right now the sun is positioned over here. This is a little grass point. They're on the shaded side. So anytime you can fish the shaded side of a grass line, that's gonna be a better, a better place for you. And the reason for that is simple. It's because the fish will actually pull out of the grass a little bit versus if they're on the sun side, they'll actually get into the grass. Those fish are harder to get to than the fish that are sitting on the outside of the weed line. So just keep that in mind next time you are, are out fishing some grass lines. You might want to pick yourself up some Ozark rigs, some Berkeley Maxent Magnum hit worms. Get out on those outside weed lines, no matter where you're at in the country, it is one of the best, if not the best pattern to catch them during the warmest part of the year. Man, so much fun. I'm gonna keep up with this, but thanks for watching guys. I appreciate all of the support. And uh, if you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow.